Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am going to be doing what is one of my most highly requested videos, oddly enough, aside from handbag and shoe collections, and that is how I care for my clothing and tips for making your clothing last longer as well. Now obviously when you're investing a lot of money into your wardrobe, you want to make sure that they're going to really stand the test of time and part of that is how you care for your garments. So I'm going to be running through four different things today and I do have a whole lot of notes just to make sure that I don't miss anything. So I'm going to be going through what type of fibers I tend to look for, ones that seem to have a little bit more longevity than others, how I store my items as well, the maintenance side of things and then also how I launder my clothing too. And I'm going to show you guys some cutaways of how I actually do that. Just a word of warning, our laundry is not anything special so I'll just um, leave that one there. And what I will do is actually drop in the description box below time codes for each of those four categories in case you just want to skip ahead to a certain part of the video. So let's start off with the type of fibers that I like to look for. In my experience, natural fibers tend to be best. I know I bang on about this all the time, but generally they are stronger and more hard wearing than their synthetic counterparts. I find if I'm shopping just with longevity in mind, something that is slightly thicker and that feels like it's got a really nice texture to it, something that has a bit of bulk will last a lot longer than something that is very finely knitted or finely woven. I've got a few examples of things that I wanted to share. So in terms of sweaters, if you want something that is going to be very durable and very hard wearing, you want to go for maybe something that is really ultra thick, like this cotton sweater that I've got here from Everlane. It is very heavy weight and you can kind of see that there's a definite thickness to the cotton. I've also got another one here, which is actually a really super affordable find. This one's from Marks and Spencer and it's just a cable knit kind of a sweater or fisherman style sweater but it's very, very thick. Again, it's 100% cotton, so I know that it's going to be really hard wearing as well, and I can throw these types of sweaters into the washing machine, which makes them very easy to care for. In terms of ones that are a little bit more delicate and that if you are laundering them in the washing machine, you wanna make sure you put them in a delicate bag just so you can extend their life. Things like this very fine merino knit sweater. This is really beautiful and really nice to wear, and you can see that it is a quality garment. However, it does have a much thinner weave to it, which you can see because it is slightly sheer or slightly transparent. The other one that I have is an even finer knit sweater, which is from Cos, and you guys will have seen this in many of my videos, I'm sure. And this one feels almost like a tissue weight, and hopefully you can kind of get a picture there of how thin this actually is. When it comes to other types of fibers as well, so I've got this linen shirt here, this is from Everlane, and this is a really, really thick quite sturdy feeling linen. It's quite starchy as well. So I know that this is the kind that will have quite a lot of longevity in my closet. And then the other one that I've got here, which is also another affordable option, this one's slightly more lightweight than that linen shirt. This is just from Uniqlo actually. And you can kind of see that there is a nice weave to the cotton. It's very tightly woven. There's a little bit of sheerness, but it is relatively thick and durable as well. So that's another example. In terms of the types of materials that I like to look for when it comes to natural fibers, cotton, silk, any kind of wool, where whether it is cashmere, merino, um, alpaca, yak, any type of wool I tend to find to be pretty hard wearing as long as you look after it properly. Also materials like linen, bamboo, lyocell and rayon, however it is worth keeping in mind that rayon will shrink slightly when you put it in the wash and it does tend to have a bit of a strange texture when you take it out of the wash once it's dried. So if you do run an iron over it, I find that that just completely resolves it and it turns back to normal, but that is just something to keep in mind. The next thing I want to talk about is storage and I actually believe that this can be just as important as how you launder an item because this is a huge part of the care process and particularly if you are spending a lot of money on your knitwear or on any item in your wardrobe actually I think you really need to show that you care about it and show those garments respect. This is something that I learned from my mum and it's definitely a I guess it's an action or a practice that I make sure that I put in place every single day. So the first thing that I do is 
At the end of the day, when I'm changing into my pajamas or into my loungewear, I hang everything up or I put it in its rightful place. So if it needs to be laundered, it goes in the laundry box, but everything else gets hung up or folded and put away. I find that this is the best way to make sure that my clothing is being stored correctly, is not being um, just thrown around like it's just an old rag. To me, I think that's very important in terms of also making sure that the fibers don't get distressed, you know, if you're trotting on them and things like that. I just think it's just a really easy way to extend the lifespan of your clothing. When it comes to knitwear, it has to be folded. There are absolutely no exceptions. This is a method that I have used for years. I don't think I've ever hung up any of my knitwear actually, but I think it's very important to fold things. The reason why is because if you hang your knitwear, uh, it's going to get misshapen, especially around the shoulders where the uh, ends of the hangers will dig in. I've seen this so many times where people have put, maybe it's their cheaper knitwear, but they put it on hangers and then you can kind of see there's this little bubble here on the shoulder where it's misshapen the fabric. And regardless of whether it's an expensive or an inexpensive piece, I do think that it is so much more worth actually taking the time to fold it up, put it away carefully because you will extend its life. I use the Marie Kondo method to fold all of my items. I'm going to show you how I do this, but I just find that this is the easiest way. It's almost like folding it as you would in a shop front as well. The other thing I just wanted to quickly mention about hanging knitwear is that the whole reason why it ends up getting misshapen is because knitwear, by its very nature, tends to be quite heavy, especially if you've got a heavy weight piece like those ones that I showed you before. They've got a lot of bulk to them and what they do is they drag the garment down. So not only are you going to end up with misshapen shoulders, but you're also going to end up stretching the garment too. So that's why I think it's really important to make sure that you fold your knitwear. The next thing is to do with moths. Now, we are very lucky that we don't have moths that eat clothing in our house. I know there's a certain variety. I've never come across them in my own experience, how I know that this is not the same for everyone. There are some really lovely sachets that you can get that smell really beautiful. I think you can get ones that are even lavender scented that actually ward against moths. You can also get your classic moth balls. These definitely remind me of my Yaya's house because she has them everywhere. Not that I think moths were ever a problem for her, but I do think that is something you need to keep in mind if you want to really protect your knitwear, especially your expensive knitwear. Something I'm even thinking about getting those little sachets to put in my drawers just so that I can protect my more expensive knitwear pieces. The other storage tip that I wanted to mention is to give your clothing room. It shouldn't be completely stacked up and packed up really tightly in your drawers or in your closet. It should have a little bit of room to move. If you pack everything in like that, what's going to happen is the fibers are going to rub against each other and you're going to experience a little bit more wear than you would if you had a little bit of room. So I like to sort of think of of my closet as a little bit of an edit or a curated edit, almost like merchandising a store. So I want to have a little bit of space in between every single item in there just so that it's not tightly packed and everything has room to breathe. Next, let's talk about clothing maintenance. This to me is, again, another really important step in extending the lifespan of your clothing. As you wear things, especially your favorite items, you are going to notice the signs of wear. It's just inevitable. Uh, and I do think it's really great to be able to wear your clothes until they're threadbare. That's probably the most sustainable way to shop and you know wear the items that you have, wear them over and over again. So what you might notice are things like buttons coming loose or falling off. You might need to replace a zipper. You might notice that the hem has come undone or that there's some slight fraying. You've got small holes. All of those things can be repaired really easily without much work. And a lot of that you can actually do yourself. You can easily do a little running stitch if you've got a hem that's come loose. It's not difficult at all. You just need to, you know, look on YouTube for a tutorial if you aren't 100% sure. Replacing buttons is probably one of the easiest things that you can do. And patching up a hole is not too difficult either, especially if it's just at the seam too. You can just flip the garment inside out and then just stitch along the seam and then it is good as new. I recently had a really good example of how I do this and I manage this with my own wardrobe is I have this really beautiful lover midi skirt. I'm going to insert a photo of it on the screen so you can see. And I've had this for about five years now. 
The zipper on it was starting to get a little bit stiff though and I knew it was on its last legs and when I was trying it on, I think it was for a cutaway that I was filming, I actually broke the zipper. I had to cut it off me because I couldn't pull the zipper down. I ended up taking that to the tailor and they replaced the zipper for me. Unfortunately, I don't have the sewing skills to do that myself. But if you do, good on you and definitely make the most of those. That's another way that I like to really extend how long I can have an item in my closet. The other thing to note is that when it comes to knit sweaters, and I think this can be a bugbear for a lot of people, but you might experience pilling and that is 100% normal. It is not an indicator of quality at all. Really expensive sweaters are going to pill just as inexpensive ones will as well. There are so many different factors at play here, but it's very easy to remedy. The first thing to note is if you've got a cashmere sweater, you can use a cashmere comb and I will show you what that looks like. I don't really think I've got any major pilling on any of my cashmere sweaters, but I will try and show you guys a demo. But basically what this does is it helps you kind of, I guess, brush out all of those little bobbly bits that you see on your sweater and makes it look good as new. Then the other thing that I would recommend doing is getting a fabric shaver. I will say use this with caution because if you're using it on a really fine or lightweight knit sweater, you can actually make a little hole. I have done this before when I wasn't being careful, so be very vigilant. But these are incredibly useful, very handy, and very inexpensive too. I will link some down in the description box below if you aren't sure what I'm talking about. I have also heard as a makeshift option that you can also use a personal razor to do this as well. I've never tried this, so take that with a grain of salt, do with that what you will. I think it's all about doing what feels comfortable for you. I personally prefer to use the tools that are, I guess, designed for that particular job, but that is a really great way to refresh your knitwear and make them ready to wear for the season ahead again. Finally, let's talk laundry. And what I am going to do is sort of split this up into non-specialty items and then items that require a little bit more care or TLC to make sure that they are laundered carefully and properly without actually destroying the quality of the garment. I do have a few general guidelines that really drive the way that I launder my clothing. The first thing is around frequency of washing. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the more you launder an item, the more it is going to wear, the more it's going to age, the more it's going to look distressed. This is just a uh, factor of washing your clothing it's just that is just how it is so what I like to do with certain clothing items is really try to I guess lengthen the amount of time that I wear them before I wash them so things like big oversized knit sweaters I will maybe wash them once a season I know that probably sounds unhygienic but it's actually not I usually wear a little t-shirt or something underneath so that is I guess my primary layer and then I've got my sweater on over the top but the other thing that I do is I air them out so I will put them on the washing line or I'll hang them we've got a clothes horse I'll hang them on that and I'll leave them outside for a few hours just to freshen them up I have heard and I haven't tried this tip so Please Google, do this at your own risk, that you can use a solution of vodka and water to help to freshen up your clothing too. If you've tried that, can you let me know actually, because I'm really curious and I've, I've never actually put this one to the test, but I have heard that this is a very great trick for freshening up your blazers. I probably apply this most to my outerwear, my knitwear, and also my jeans as well. I think jeans are another one that you should probably try and launder as little as possible. One of the ways that you can kind of extend the frequency that you can wear them before you need to wash them is to put them in the freezer. That helps to destroy any bacteria or anything like that that are living in the jeans and freshen them up so that you can wear them again a few more times We have to pop them in the wash. Uh, that's a really great tip and I have heard you can do that with other items as well so that's a really good one to try and I'll probably just put them into a bag or something like that just to separate them from everything else you've got in the freezer next I want to talk about how I kind of launder my items so for my non-specialty items we do three separate washes so we've got whites colors and darks our washing machine, which I wouldn't recommend, we definitely need to upgrade, it's quite a small one, has a setting on it which is sort of a, it's called Daily Express, so it's a 39 minute setting at a 30 degree wash, which is a cold wash. And I use that for pretty much all of our clothing. If something's a little bit more soiled, like just say, maybe I am soaking some white towels which have got makeup on them, I will occasionally end up uh, putting them on a longer wash or pausing the wash halfway through so that they can soak in the water. But I use a 
powder, washing powder, I don't have a preference. I just kind of buy whatever is on special, but there are really great options out there, especially if you want to get ones that are a bit more environmentally friendly. I do occasionally use a fabric softener as well. I'll only put this in there if I don't have anything that is averse to fabric softener, like nylons, uh, basically gin gear. <laughs> and then if something is dirty, like maybe say we've been eating dinner and gotten tomato sauce on a white t-shirt, I will use Vanish. I believe that's what it's called to spray on the garments. I leave that for about five to 10 minutes before I put it in the wash with the rest of the items. And then what I will also do is I will put a capful of the Vanish powder, or I think we've got Sard, it's the same thing basically, into the wash too, because that helps to remove stains. It's a stain remover essentially, and it makes everything look a little bit brighter. Now I only use that for our whites and colors. I don't use that on dark items, but I will use the Vanish Spray on darker items if I can see that there's a bit of a stain there. And sometimes I will soak them as well. So that is where I put the Sard or Vanish Powder into a bucket. So I will put some super hot water at the base and I will put in a capful again and I will kind of mix that up so it's gotten all soapy and you can see that the little granules have dissolved and then I will add cold water. The reason why I do this when I'm soaking items is that warm or hot water will actually set a stain, make it more difficult to get out or even impossible to remove. So keeping it soaked in cold water is the way to go no matter what is on it. That is my biggest tip for that. And the other thing is that I always put my delicates into a delicates bag. I find that this is the best way to go. You may recall if you watched my 10 best style purchases that I mentioned a Kate Sylvester long sleeve knit sweater. Uh, I didn't realize this but because Luke's been doing a lot of work outside but there was a screw that had managed to get into the washing machine and it completely destroyed my favorite black roll neck sweater so lesson learned definitely checking the barrel of the washing machine a lot more closely from now on but yeah that is something that I do for all of my delicate items because it makes sure that they don't get too stretched or pulled or anything like that um, in terms of keeping my whites white like I mentioned before I do use that side stain remover to soak them I'll leave it for maybe Maybe two to three hours before I put it into a general wash which is my best tip and yeah, like I said make sure that the water is cold when you're soaking. I think I probably get the most questions about how I launder my high maintenance items so I thought I would start with silk because this is one that I think a lot of you are curious about and there's a few different ways that I will launder my silk pieces. The first way is to hand wash them the old fashioned way. And I'm gonna go through an entire, I guess, demonstration of how I actually do this because I've got a particular method which I find really effective, it works, it doesn't really agitate the fibers too much or anything like that. Uh, the other way is actually just put them in the washing machine on a cold wash setting. This is a lot more gentle, the cycle isn't as, I suppose it doesn't agitate the material as much as a general cycle would and I find that that's actually pretty great. I just make sure I put them into a delicates bag as well. When it comes to really beautiful wash silks, which are best known for their brush textured effect that almost has a suede feeling to it, you really need to use your best judgment. I would recommend doing a patch test if you want to try and launder these at home and see how you go. Maybe patch test the hemline at the back and then steam it or iron it to see how it looks afterwards. I find that the best way to go with these ones, especially if it's a more expensive piece, maybe you've got an equipment silk glass or something that's even more extravagant or expensive, then you may just like to take it to the dry cleaner because they have the tools to be able to launder it in the best possible way that will retain its original look and feel. And that's kind of, I guess, the rule of thumb that I've always gone by. I can admit that when I did have my equipment silk glasses and I put them in the wash that they did not look the same after I laundered them. I don't have this issue with my Grana and Everlane ones. I'm quite happy to throw those ones in the washing machine. They're a lot more affordable though. And I don't mind the fact that they don't look exactly the same. They still look really high quality and they've held up really well in terms of how I've laundered and cared for them so far. As with anything, I'd recommend just using your best judgment. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, then maybe just leave it to the professionals. Next, let's talk about wool and cashmere, which I would say are probably the two kinds of, I suppose, fibers that I tend to put off washing the most just because I find these to be the most high maintenance in terms of taking up time when it comes to laundering them. So for me, it is hand wash all the way and I prefer to do this manually rather than relying on a machine to do it for me just because I have had some hiccups doing that in the past. 
So what I like to do, and I did talk about this earlier, is that I will get some washing powder or washing solution, whether it's I've got a special cashmere or wool wash, and I will dilute that into some hot water and get it all soapy, and then I will fill that up with cold water, making sure that I test the water with my hand to make sure that it's cold before I put my clothing in there. If I'm washing more than one item, then I start with my lightest items first, and then I go on to my darkest ones. And what I will do is I will completely submerge the garment within the water and I'll start to massage it so that that nice soapy water can really filter through the wool or the texture of the fabric and help to clean it and get rid of any grime or dirt. Once I'm sufficiently happy with this, and I will say I probably don't do this for more than five minutes just because I don't want to agitate the fibers, which you can do if you're kind of moving them around in water too much, is that I will very carefully squeeze out as much of the water as possible. I will say this, do not wring your sweaters. By wringing, I mean twisting the material to squeeze out any excess water. That is 100% a no-no, and that is how you will actually end up misshaping your garments. I'll then tip the water out of the bucket that I've been using to clean the sweater, and then I will start to refill that with cold water, just so that I can kind of, I guess, massage out any remaining suds that are still in the sweater. Then I will again squeeze as much of the excess water out of the garment as I possibly can using my hands and I kind of do this slowly going down the garment starting from the neck and going down all the way to the bottom and then I'll also do the sleeves individually as well then what I'll do is I'll get a clean towel from the cupboard and I will lie this on the ground and then I will lay the garment flat on top of the towel then I'll pick up the end of the towel and then roll it roll the garment within the towel so that it is completely wrapped up and this next step feels a little bit like crushing grapes but I will step on top of the towel and that helps to squeeze out any excess water and I just find that this is so effective especially when it comes to actually drying the garment and making sure that it dries a lot faster then what I will do is I will lay my garment flat. So if I'm laying it on the table, if it's a bulkier piece, then I will put a towel underneath. Or if it's a lighter item, like one of my uh, granite cashmere sweaters, then I will just lay that on top of the clothes horse, flat along, and then with the sleeves dangling off the ends. I know this is probably not the best method, but this is just how I personally do it. And I find that it works really well for me. I do find that with thinner knits, like maybe this merino sweater, I do find that I can just throw those into the washing machine. I'll always put them in a delicate bag and then it will either be on the hand wash or a quick cold setting. We have a 15 minute quick wash, which I do find really effective and that's a really great way to make sure that the garments aren't submerged in water too long and they aren't being agitated too much because that can actually cause shrinkage over time. I would 100% recommend making sure that you take careful note of the care instructions and only do what you feel comfortable with. You know, I'm just giving you my own advice, my own experience, however, you need to do what's right for you. So that is how I launder my clothing and also care for them so that they will have a much longer life and remain in as good a condition as long as possible. I hope that you found this video helpful or useful and if you do have any other tips or tricks that you use please let us know down in the comment section below because I'm all ears for that sort of thing. I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. See you then. Bye!